Skin care special, you say? Really? Really? Well, not quite just skincare. There's a couple of other things that we'll be looking into as well. Uh, but yeah, mostly skincare. What the situation is, for many, many years I used to shave my forearms because I prefer the hairless look on my forearms, to be, to be basically honest, and that also meant doing my upper arms as well. Um, and I stopped for a good number of years because reasons. And those reasons were basically, I got lazy and I couldn't be bothered, and I've started getting back into it. I've started noticing things which I was actually aware of before, but didn't really look into. There's basically a condition, you might see this sometimes on uh, women whose legs are exposed when they're going around wearing shorts or skirts or bikinis or whatever. Uh, you might notice what, just the hint of hair poking through the skin. Okay, this is, you'll no, normally notice this on a woman who has light skin and dark hair. Those two factors are all the important things. And the same thing is true of men with light skin and dark hair as well. If you were a man who shaves your legs and you've got light skin and dark hair, you're likely to get the same thing. This is known as strawberry legs. It's a bit of a weird sounding thing, but if you know what a strawberry looks like, Google one if you haven't, then you can often see the yellow pips poking through the skin of the strawberry, hence strawberry legs, because that looks kind of similar in some regards. And depending on the thickness of the hairs, then it can look, you know, a lot worse than it actually is, especially if uh, the person has really pale skin. But it's true for men and women alike, it's just more noticeable on women, because typically, women shave their legs and more or more more likely far more likely to have their legs on display than a man will in most cases we'll leave that at that but there are ways to basically deal with it so as i myself am not in to shave my legs and there's no way to really get my legs up on camera at this point i do however shave my arms or rather i am back into it and you might just, the camera might just be able to pick up on some of the hairs here. Now, there's lots of different ways to try to deal with this. And I've made use of some of them just the last night. I've kind of overdone it a bit. Okay, now I'll show you the product that I used. But please bear in mind, I used a product that is actually meant for the legs. And that product is the Alida of London Hair Remover Mitt for smooth, hair-free legs, as you can tell from the picture here. We've got a woman using this thing on her legs. So you've actually got some quite good instructions on the back. Very basic, very simple, very to the point. Three mitts per pack. We'll come back to that in just a second. The instructions are very good and very clear. Skin must be clean and dry. So this is something you do either after you've gotten out of the shower and you've dried yourself off perfectly or before you've ever even set foot in the shower. Slide the mitt onto hand, hold against the skin and rub gently in a circular motion four times in one direction and then four times in the opposite direction. Any fine dust is a result of exfoliation. When finished, apply a cool damp flannel to legs and then use a moisturiser. Continue to moisturise regularly over the next few days to avoid skin dryness. The mitts are reusable, change as required. And it also gives a caution. We'll come back to the caution in just a second because I want to talk about step two here. And for that, I shall need to bring out one of the mitts. Because as you can see, I can sort of fit one onto three of my fingers. Four fingers is a bit more difficult, but you can basically see double-sided so you can use it, you know, either way. You know, and you can also see where, what, what, what my first mistake was there. It says, use it in a circular motion four times and then four times either way. Wax on, wax off. Yeah, I went at it like that, as if though I was sanding something down, sanding down some wood in a woodwork class, uh, which was one of the problems. The other problem was I did it more than four times. Uh, yeah, I was so desperate to actually use these to see how well they worked. I had actually read the instructions on Amazon when I bought it off uh, the Amazon site, because you actually get this as one of the pictures. Uh, that they give you So I did know in advance what you were supposed to do, but I didn't follow those instructions I was so desperate to see what it did and it 
has actually done quite a good job of uh, getting rid of the hairs. There's one or two from areas that I've missed, but that's just because I was sloppy with it. Uh, in case you're wondering, yes it is hurting. Uh, this is about 12 hours later, so I'm still getting a slight bit of burn. I felt a hell of a lot more burn after about half an hour, uh, and that was even after moisturising, uh, which is where this comes in, but more on that later as well. So this obviously is not what I actually used there, but not the last night anyhow. What I did use was this one over here. Yeah. And I've used both sides, because I have actually done both arms, but the second time I did it far more sensibly. I've actually followed the instructions. Um, but you'll probably notice that there are some hairs poking through. And that's just because, again, I didn't go through at it quite as hard as I did with this arm. So, yeah. So it does work. You just have to follow the instructions and be careful. And, as I was mentioning before, the caution area. Do not use more than once a week to avoid irritation. When I used this on either arm, there was dust. It does mention that there was that dust as a result of exfoliation. That's just basically dead skin coming off. This thing is basically doing two things. It's exfoliating your skin to get rid of dead skin cells, as well as getting rid of the hair. There is something else that you can use instead, but it only exfoliates, it doesn't get rid of the hair. There's also something else you should be aware of. Hmm, yeah, I tore after about, oh, I don't know, the fourth use, okay, I mean, it's still usable, I can still sort of hold it like this, for example, and then, yeah, 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 rub, 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 and so on and so forth, but, yeah, it is just a bit small for the hands of a, of a man, and it's, even if you just use three fingers, you're still not quite getting the proper traction on it, but that's because it's really meant for, uh, for a woman's hand, and it's meant for use on the legs. And let's face it, men on average do have larger size hands than women. Um, me and my sister are roughly the same height, but my hands are, you know, a fair bit bigger than hers. Her hands are average for a woman, my hands are average for a man. You know, it's just one of the differences that do actually exist between men and women, despite what some people might want you to believe otherwise. Anyhow, moving on to the next exfoliating treatment. This is Essence of Morocco Limited. And although it's, I think it's displayed as a, well, it's displayed on, on the site as being a glove, it's more of a pouch, but the basic idea is that you're basically going to be grabbing onto whatever part you're going to be exfoliating. I'm not actually putting pressure on at this point, obviously, because that arm is sore. It doesn't actually need exfoliating at this point anyhow. Um, but, yeah, you can see how my hand is fitting around my arm and so on and so forth. It's not doing anything about the hairs, but it is very good at getting rid of dead skin and so on and so forth uh, in its own right. Uh, now you can use this in the shower, and they do recommend that you use the, their own brand of stuff to, uh, you know, their own butter, I think they call it, to help exfoliate your skin and whatnot, but it's not actually necessary to be either in the shower or use that cream. You can use this dry. I've used it about f uh, four days in a row before I made use of this, so, you know, just so you know. Yeah, I used this four days in a row, and I used it on my left arm first, that was my test subject, and obviously you can't see the benefit of it right now, um, but after I finished using it on my left arm, I did the entire left arm itself, right up to and over the shoulder as well, and then I stopped, and I felt how, you know, at my arm itself at that point, and it did feel really, really smooth. And then I felt my right arm, and I felt, bloody hell, you can tell the difference straight away. My right arm, in comparison, felt lumpy. Not that it felt lumpy to begin with, it just felt lumpy in comparison, because obviously this arm was now nice and smooth, far smoother than it's ever been before. This arm, on the, the hand, while it was its natural smoothness, in comparison, felt really rough and bumpy. Bloody bizarre, but there you go. One other thing I've noticed, because I've been using it all over on everything, including my fingers, is that it has actually helped start rubbing my finger, uh, my fingernails back a bit, okay? You know, the skin that applies over the, well, the skin that applies over uh, the fingernails. Yeah, the skin that goes over the fingernails here at the tops. Mine's always been f fairly, um, Fairly bad, shall we say. Okay, same thing with the thumbnails. Not sure what 
it's caused that. That's something that's just came recently. But, you know, my fingernails have been perfectly healthy. It's just that the skin's always sort of came over the nails more than it should do. And that's because I don't use anything like nail files, anything to push the skin back, which you are supposed to do, but never mind. Uh, but yeah, but from using this and actually going over my skin like so, that's actually done the job for me in some regards. It would still help if I actually went at them with a nail file and pushed them into place. Um, but that is obviously something that does do quite a nice job of uh, sorting things out in its own right. Now, the other thing that they all recommend, both of these, is to use a moisturiser. Now, the reason I got this is because, okay, I'm getting older. I'm not particularly bothered about my looks, but I did, did notice I'm starting to get things like lines and wrinkles and whatnot that I don't particularly like. And I, you know, then I heard somebody at work mention something about collagen. Now, they were getting collagen lip injections. Um, which I've got to be brutally honest, it looks ridiculous. When I see, whenever you see anybody who has had collagen lip injections and it's made their lips look bigger and fuller and whatnot, the end result to me is that it always looks just frankly silly. I mean, it's not going to last. The collagen's going to be in, you know, it's going to be absorbed by the body. Obviously, they like the look, but I've got to be brutally honest, it looks silly to me to make your lips look that much bigger than what they naturally are. And I know some very skilled uh, medical professionals who inject these things can use it to make your lips into any kind of shape that you can imagine, but it still just looks bizarre to me. I just, I just don't get it. But Collagen is something that is vitally important to your skin. Your skin is actually made up of collagen in the first place. So having something like this, you know, can help. <coughs> oh boy. Yeah, it's still a bit sore and tender. Uh, but at the same time, I just keep hitting the camera stand as I'm trying to rub this on. This is, oh, the problems of being a YouTuber who does this kind of review. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, as you can see, it gets absorbed into the skin quite quickly. And that is basically going to help heal me, perhaps just a little faster. Although I can definitely feel the heat coming up, and that's one very important thing. If you do get a burn, okay, one trick you might have heard to help deal with the burn is to apply butter to it. Because the butter will soothe the burn. And then the heat will come back and it'll interact with the butter, it'll make the butter heat up, and the butter will then burn you much worse. If you get any kind of burn, don't do what I've done and apply things like cream to it, because I, I am literally burning right now, I can feel the burn, and it's it's bearable, don't worry, I'm not gonna scream in pain and, oh, mother, help, you know, that sort of thing. Um, it's gonna pass in a few seconds, but if you've got a burn, and you can still feel a burn sensation, run that body part under a cold tap for at least 60 seconds, if not possibly longer. That will cool the burn. I used to do first aid, I used to be a first aider at work. That's how I know that. That's something that we were told on two separate occasions when I went through training for uh, first aid. The first time I went through first aid, we got told that by the instructor. The second time when I requalified, we got told that by the entirely different instructor. It is sound advice. If you get a burn, apply cold water. Cold run tap for 60 seconds. That's a life uh, fact, yeah. That's some good medical knowledge. So yeah, I do actually provide useful information sometimes. Anyhow, so in general, this stuff is basically going to uh, revitalize the skin, it's going to renew, and so on and so forth. Dermatology tested, paraben free, I've no idea what paraben is. Uh, made with 100% natural moisturizers, instantly boosts skin's natural radiance, and so on and so forth. Suitable for sensitive skin, dermatology tested, paraben free again, and all the stuff that was on there. It tells you the uh, philosophy, it's dedicated to bringing you the best of nature with formulas that delight the senses as they leave your skin with a radiant, soft and fresh feel. And yes, this stuff does feel very, very nice when you put it on your skin. I've been using it on my arms, I've been using it on my face, and uh, so on and so forth. Did I mention I've actually used this on my face as well? That means I'm going to have to insert some footage of my face to show you the results. It ain't pretty. <laughs> My face ain't pretty, let's uh, be brutally honest here. Uh, yeah. 
See, told you. But anyhow, so the skin's looking better. I can't do anything to make me look good in of myself, but uh, yeah, that's my problem. Uh, but one reason I've been using this isn't just to help um, smooth out my skin tones and whatnot and so on and so forth, but apparently this will do that. This will apparently help, as will apparently this, it will help by getting rid of uh, all the flaky skin and so on and so forth. The two of these can basically help all your skin tones somewhat so that everything looks more even. Uh, so let's see, this creamy, non-greasy formula combines collagen and elastin proteins with 100% natural moisturizers, helping to rejuvenate, revive and restore skin. Apply daily to achieve the soft, smooth, healthy look and skin feel that your skin deserves. Directions, massage gently into clean, dry skin, apply daily, continued use, improves skin moisturization. And I'm just realizing uh, the ingredients are partly covered over by this barcode, so I can't read all of them, but we have water, Glycerin, soybean, oil, glycoil stearate, trimethylene, carpel, glycan, carbamir, hydrodoxin cellulose, edeth, BHT, steamide AMP, and hydroxine, possibly. That's my best guess on how you pronounce those things. No idea if that's right or not, but yeah. So I've been applying this before bed, after I've used this, okay, to help deal with... Basically, let's face it, if you are going to be using something like this, and certainly something like this, you are, in some regards, going to be damaging the skin, to be brutally honest. So yeah, um, so this will take off dead skin, that will take off even more dead skin, as well as hair. Uh, whereas this will just sort of do a more the general job of everything. Quite a nice job, it's quite a comfortable feeling. And then this will help repair that damage. And that's one of the things where this came in. Remember my review of this? That went up on Monday. This is obviously Wednesday. Yeah, I managed to do two videos a week again. Hey! First time for, uh, for anything, eh? Well, yeah. So the idea behind this is that it damages your skin so that your skin then repairs itself, which of course means collagen stimulation. And that is where this comes in, so this helps in that regard as well. But there's a few other things that you can also apply here. As you might have noticed from the photo from earlier, and here it is again. <laughs> yeah. I don't have the best pores on my nose ever. They're very noticeable and that's been a problem since childhood. Uh, so they're actually recommending things like a deep pore charcoal cleanser. Now charcoal seems to be the new byword for everything. Use charcoal to clean yourself with and you think, hang on, charcoal? Hang on, that, isn't that just soot and dirt and whatnot and isn't that just going to make you dirty? I think it's the fact that it's getting into your pores and it's you having to then clean it out of your pores that actually does what it's supposed to do. You've got some interesting good foot on the back though. Let's face it, charcoal, a common ingredient found in nature, is known for to both you draw out impurities and trap them. Does it? Never heard of that before, but there, there you go. What it does, Bior Deep Pore Charcoal Cleanser draws out and drops twice the dirt and impurities and a basic cleanser, purifying pores to leave your face deeply clean and your skin tingly smooth. Pores are twice as clean after just one use. It's got natural charcoal, it's oil free, it's hypoallergenic, it's dermatology tested. For optimal use, use daily wet face, come cleanse it into hands and work into a white lather. Massage over entire face, rinse thoroughly. Avoid eye contact. If contact occurs, rinse thoroughly with water. And then it tells you all the ingredients, which are aqua, glycerin, sodium, laurate, sulfate, copper, copper, better mean, uh, sorbitol, lorith for copiochic, etherogenolysis. Why are these things so difficult to pronounce? You have to be a pharmacist. Yeah, I'm not going to continue reading all of this because, oh, hang on, <laughs> we've actually gone to stuff I might actually be able to pronounce. Cross polymer, salicylic acid, okay, can't pronounce that one. Sodium benzite, parfum, sodium hydroxide, menthol, another word I can't pronounce, another word I can't pronounce. Disodium, maybe? EDTA again, charcoal powder, mannitol, cellulose. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Probably mispronounce all of these. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the others. Anyhow, so this is something that you're supposed to just squeeze on, lather in, and put on your face, and then 
talk about your business. Obviously, after rinsing off. Um, I've been using that basically as a sort of shower gel, and I've also been alternating with these two buggers Pure Active from Garnier. Uh, 3 in 1 clay and Pure Active. And it's a, the same basic sort of thing. You rub these in, lather them up, put them onto your face, in my case, my nose specifically, and then rubbing them around everywhere else. In fact, let's just bring up that photo again. In fact, what I've actually tried doing is combining all three. So squeeze one on, squeeze the other one, squeeze the other one on, lather up and put it on. And I think it's working. It's definitely doing something. My nose does tend to look rather red at the end of the day after I've uh, came out of the shower, but that could just also be the hot water. But it definitely seems to be doing something to pull everything out and get everything uh, clear. And of course, I'm also using this as well, which is also supposed to help in that kind of situation. But yeah, charcoal seems to be an odd one. There is another little hack you could try. Toothpaste. And I've just brought this right out of the uh, bathroom and it's leaking water for some reason, which is also handy for me because I can then demonstrate cleaning this thing because I can sort of use it as a cloth and yeah. Tell you what, let's just put this to one side to see it dry out on camera, the heat from the light bulb here ought to uh, help in some regard um, but yeah this for years has been mentioned toothpaste in general has been mentioned as being a treatment for acne which makes me think that you could probably use it for things like pore treatment as well because let's face it at the end of the day as it acne and so on and so forth is basically trapped dirt and whatnot and so on inside one of your pores so this should work as well methinks I'll give that a try and see how things work. Um, I'm still, still kind of liking this. It's an odd feeling, but there you go. But you'll have noticed that there's one more thing here. And again, it's charcoal. This is Colmax Activated Charcoal Teeth Whitening Powder. Yeah, that's right. You can get charcoal toothpaste. Although to call it a toothpaste is a bit mixed uh, because what it actually is, is a powder. Okay. You might not be able to see it too well, but what I shall do is I shall bring this toothbrush. Yes, it's been in my mouth, this has. Yes, isn't that all fine and dandy and disgusting? And what you're supposed to do is just basically make sure the toothbrush is wet and then dip it in there. Now, you might think dipping a wet toothbrush into charcoal is going to damage the charcoal in some way. It doesn't seem to have any effect like that at all. It just seems to... Uh, you know, it just seems to keep itself quite nicely dry, although don't, for what, whatever you do, don't take this into the show and expose it directly to the, uh, to the water, because that probably will just make it spill out and ruin everything, but yeah. You brush that onto your teeth, spread it all over the place, front and back and underneath and so on and so forth, and then you brush like crazy to get it off. What I've been doing... I haven't been putting on that much, but what I have been doing is once I've got all the stuff on my teeth, I've then applied a little bit of this and then brushed like crazy. And of course, this is also one of those toothbrushes that does that. Ooh, never noticed that before. It's actually sort of made everything go sort of like alien goo type thing down the uh, bristles and everything. Nasty. Uh, two, th two things I will mention went wrong with this. When this got delivered, this a lot of this stuff all got delivered at the same time from Amazon. And I don't think this was really the fault of Amazon, but uh, you might have noticed that the lid is a bit damaged in all regards. It did not come with any other kind of protective cover around it, so what happened, because this lid was damaged, it sprayed just a small, fine quantity of the, uh, the charcoal powder onto everything else that was inside the same container, which included this, which the more eagle-eyed of you might have noticed is just a little dirty and that's because although I did clean it up it did get covered ever so slightly in charcoal powder uh, not really that much of an issue but yeah, yeah there you go I didn't really lose that much what you saw on that side there is all I, uh, all I've got left over after about six uses of the stuff I think now there is one other thing I need to mention this is Allegedly, probably medicated and so on and so forth. Uh, 
and citrus says the ingredients are 100% natural. Coconut shell activated charcoal, so they're basically taking the coconuts and burnt it and taking the charcoal to, uh, to, to, to form this. But there are people out there who are concerned about this. This isn't just any old charcoal that they've just put together. They are all supposed to have done something to make sure that it's as safe and appropriate as possible. But there are medical experts out there that are concerned about the effect this could have on your gums. Okay, because it, they are concerned that this could, uh, as well as clean your teeth and make them look whiter, which is probably going to be a healthier than, uh, thing than bleaching your teeth with uh, all those bleachers that are out there. I've, I've reviewed a bleaching kit as well. Uh, there's a video around there somewhere. So, uh, go, go, go search for it. Uh, if you're looking at the YouTube version of this video, go search for it up there after you've watched this one. Um, but it's probably healthier than a bleaching kit because let's face it, what the hell goes into a bleaching kit? But they're still concerned about the potential damage for gums. So all I've done the, uh, with this is just used it a small amount once a day. And then once I've put it all, uh, all on my teeth, I've then been using regular toothpaste, that one there, to take it off, you know, to clean up properly. And then in the evening, because you're supposed to brush twice a day, I've just used that. And my teeth definitely look cleaner, I think. Shall we take a look? Yeah, I don't exactly think I'm going to ever have that Bing! time to look, but yeah, there you go. Hey, right, so yeah. Can I recommend these things? Well, yes, I definitely can, because uh, they, they seem to be working. Um, I'll have to do a proper follow-up review at some point, because obviously this is not a true... This isn't one of my regular review videos where I've unboxed everything and gave you my first impressions. It's not a Deja re-review video, because that's a second look. This is a first look. It's a first impression type, type thing after I've actually used it. But, yeah, that's... Just the way the cookie uh, crumbles sometimes. Sometimes I can't do the kind of video reviews I normally would do, but there you go. One other thing I would mention, if you've got something like this, okay, you need to make sure that you clean it properly. And in that regard, you need something like this. This is Galaxy medicinal alcohol type cleanser type stuff, which is meant for this and can also be used on razor blades. So what you do, in this particular regard, they haven't gave you any kind of spout. You just sort of tip a small amount into the cup. I'm not going to do that on this uh, work surface, obviously, because it's already wet and damaged, and this is a sort of minor, minor acid type thing. But you would then, in this particular case, spin this around, keep it spinning, and then pour this around. I can't get it to spin very well right now, but that's the idea anyhow. And it does work, and, you know, I can recommend this, I can recommend this. I can recommend all of these. It's just a question of whether or not you actually want to use them. But yeah, probably Deja re-review follow-up to come at some point in the future. Don't expect it to be next week or next month or anything like that because I'm gonna have to give this quite a long period to really take effect. My God, I've just looked at the view finally and we're coming up to 29 minutes. I think I can only think of one or two places where I'm gonna need to edit, but oh well, say la vie. Bye-bye.